before we actually come on to talk about tax, I wanted to just explain where all of you guys in the room and the wider practice would come in. So if you look at us as a business, we support about 100 clients and our, our lead uh, program is R&D tax. <laughs> We're very keen to leverage those relationships and add value in lots of other areas. So, for example, I, I had a, uh, a session with Peter a while back, and I think that somebody with Peter's skill set improving productivity in that would be really useful. And you know, Peter, that we've been talking to you about how can we, as the practice, go into a sort of typical engineering manufacturing company and do a lot more than just cash flow R&D tax. So I just wanted to, uh, to share that with you all to, uh, to begin with. But if we move on to what actually is R&D tax and why should, why should you and your clients be excited about it? Well, in simple terms, it's tax relief against corporation tax. And it actually applies to people who are making and making lots of money and paying corporation tax. But bizarrely, people who are loss making, who've never made any money at all, actually get slightly more out of this scheme. So it's, uh, it's, it's really quite interesting. The other exciting thing is that it's not a one-off process. We, we go in every year and support clients. And therefore, the vast majority of our clients either pay zero corporation tax, absolutely zilch, or they just pay a very small amount. And this is year in, year out. So what are they getting rewarded for? Yes, it is. Uh, when it was first launched back in 2000, it was all about new product development and people in white coats in labs. But it's moved on a whole lot now. So I would say that 70% plus of our claims are around process and production improvements, which is the sort of areas that Peter helps his clients with, not necessarily people developing new products or services. And the other important thing is that if people try genuinely try things and they're unsuccessful, they can still get money back under this. It doesn't have to be a commercial success to, to recover money. So the key sectors that we support, are probably the biggest three, are engineering, manufacturing, and technology software. But we've also done some really good work in agriculture, farming, in various forms of uh, construction, and quite a few food producers as well. So it's really quite it's, it's really quite varied. And how will you guys spot an opportunity? Well, partly it's to do with those key sectors I've mentioned and the sort of activity they're doing. But in, in, in a couple of slides time, we'll talk about three simple questions you can ask. And if they, if they give us a yes to one of those, almost certainly they will qualify. And I suppose the really frightening statistic, this scheme's been around since 2000, but still today, HMRC reckon only about 15% of eligible companies are claiming. So there's 85% of people out there, some of whom that you will know, may even be clients or, or friends or family that are not taking advantage of this. So if we move on, what does it, how does it um, pay out to clients? In simple terms, they can recover between 26 and 33% of their qualifying expenditure under this scheme. Now, what they, what the main inputs, are, I'll keep it simple, but the main inputs of qualifying expenditure are staff materials, if they've done any special software, or if they use particular subcontractors to help them. So companies don't have to do it all themselves, but they do have to be doing something a little bit clever, and we'll come on to that in a moment. And in terms of what's it worth to the client, so our average first claim is 62,000. So for a typical SME, that makes a huge difference to their bottom line. But we do support clients. We've done claims as low as five to 10,000, and we've done 300,000 pound claims. But if you look at an average of 60 odd thousand, it's still really important. And from HMRC's point of view, they're very keen to reward companies, but equally, they want to make sure that it is proper activity. And the, the way that we describe and, and, and get um, all this money back for clients is we do a very, very detailed technical report, and that shows the uncertainty that the clients were facing when they embarked on these projects. 
And then we do a very detailed backup financial schedule. So we give HMRC all the evidence why they should uh, pay all this money back to clients. And we'll come on to some of those in a bit more detail later on. So these, these are the three key questions that if we ask, if we get a yes to one of these, we're very confident that we can, uh, we can help the client. So the first one is around, are they developing new or improved products, services, systems? And I was stressing that 70% plus of our claims are around improvements to products and services, not brand new products that they've developed and got a patent on. The next one is, are they routinely, almost on a daily basis, facing technical challenges and uncertainties? And then finally, are, are all this good work they're doing around process and production improvements to improve cost, productivity, quality, or reduce the amount of waste they're producing? So as I said, if we get a yes to, or if anybody else, those three, and gets a yes to one of them, it's a pretty good signal that they uh, will qualify. So moving on then, if the thing will uh, will let me, or is it? It seems it seems to have uh, frozen now, which isn't so good. But let's see. Uh, don't worry. Um, yeah, come out the right right now. Know that you're all right. So, there you go. so what I wanted to do was just pick. I picked four recent examples that we work with. A couple of these have actually come through people that are in the family business practice as well. So it was really just to show you that we, we work in a variety of different sizes of companies. So this first one is actually an Emma Robinson Insurance Today client. So they're turning over less than a million pounds. And over the claim period, they paid 53,000 in tax. And we got them 85% of that back as a, as a first claim. And for them, the main inputs were staff and materials. And in their case, they're doing a lot of genuine prototyping and reverse engineering as well, which I'm sure Peter will be uh, very familiar with. So it's, it's looking at uh, taking an existing product and maybe taking it apart and seeing how they could do it quicker, more cost-effectively, better quality, that kind of thing. And for the company, the, the MD spent two and a half hours with us to get this £45,000 bag. And I suppose he, when Emma introduced us, his view was this just sounds way too good to be true. But of course it wasn't. And uh, we will go on to support them for, uh, for the next few years. So if we look at our second example, this is a company who are, um, they're in the video surveillance world. Again, they're only turning over about a million pounds. And this company hasn't paid tax for years, absolutely years they haven't paid tax. And yet, when we worked with them, we got them uh, 56 grand back in, in their first year and another 13,000, which they got that lump of cash back within the first sort of 14, 15 months of working with us. And, and in their case, they are doing some genuine product development on some, some clever products and some ele electronics around there. And to, to achieve that, they are doing a lot of prototyping. But across those two claims that we've done for them so far, the MD and a couple of staff have spent four hours with us. And I suppose their big question, because they didn't know about the scheme until they engaged with us, was how do we know how much material spent to post against R&D? And obviously, we, as I'll explain later, we spend a lot of time helping clients and supporting them in that area. So if we move on to example three, this is a 12, 13 million pound industrial equipment supplier up in Scotland. They'd actually paid 1.3 million in the, uh, in the periods that we were looking at. And we've got them uh, a very substantial sort of 370, 380 grand back. Um, now, in their case, it was the usual staff and materials, but they have a lot of specialist subcontractors they work with to improve their production processes. So we did put a a lot of cost against those. But equally, they are developing a couple of new products where they have got patents as well. So for this, this company, it was the general manager and a couple of staff, and again, it was four hours. But in their case, they claimed 10 years before through their accountant. It was a really painful process, and they got the square root of bugger all back. 
And therefore, when they saw the numbers we were talking about, they were a little bit concerned, is it not too high? But of course, it wasn't uh, HMRC have, uh, have happily paid it. And then the fourth example is a, a more sort of traditional engineering company. This is actually another Insurance Today client. And uh, turning over around the 4 million mark, they paid 145,000 tax. And yet, in our very first claim, we've recovered more than that, nearly uh, 190,000 uh, pounds worth of tax. And again, these guys are doing a lot of good new product development and lots and lots of prototyping. In this case, because he's got two business businesses, we spent a little bit longer with the MD and Five Star, but it's still a day's work for them. We spend a lot more on it. But where, where I think this one was interesting is that we, we didn't actually get introduced by Emma. We got introduced by their accountant because we worked with one of the accountant's clients. He was amazed at what we did with that client and he introduced us to this organization so that was a quick whistle stop tour of four examples and then i suppose to finish with it's why do clients want to work with us why do we support seven or eight accountancy practices with this scheme and it's because we've developed a very good process and this is peter and and we all talked about differentiation on Monday's call, and this is a good example of, of what we've done. So we have a very simple process. Once, once somebody's asked those three questions, and we've, we've got a pretty good idea, we take a quick look at the website, and then we literally have a 15-minute call with them. And at the end of that 15 minutes, we can be absolutely certain that we can either support them or we can't. If we then can support them, we go into this longer-term meeting, and this is one of our key differentiators we spend an equal amount of time talking about finance as we do technical but it's a very focused session and we we're getting everything we need from the client in that one or two meetings and then we do everything else behind the scenes virtually all of our competitors get the client to do the financial side and they don't understand the scheme they don't understand what they should be putting together and it's a painful process for them so as I say, we do the whole thing. We write a very detailed technical report. So in the case of the, the company that we got the 190,000 back for, with two companies, one report was 40 pages and the other was 28 pages. They're very detailed technical reports. And we crawl all over their, their supplier ledgers to understand their costings. Uh, and then the good news is we submit that claim to HMRC uh, it's generally four to six weeks when they, they pay the money and the clients don't pay us anything until they've got the money in their bank account. So it might sound like we're a no win, no fee. And in this case, we are. But if you look at it, we've, we've already identified that they will qualify. We've already seen all of their financials. So at the point that we submit a claim, we know it's going to fly and we know what the size is going to be. And I suppose... In summary, we've worked on absolutely hundreds of claims now across all sorts of different sectors, and we've recovered about 5 million, and that figure is just going up day in, day out as we support more clients.